Hello everybody, I'm Pastor Steve and uh, thanks for taking time to, to join me here today as we, as we share some scripture and we share a message. And this week we're going to start and we're in the book of John. We're uh, going to be in chapter 2 verses 1 through 11. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This, the first of his miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. And this is the word of God for the people of God. And uh, I, I'm sure I can hear the people out there saying, thanks be to God. Pray with me, please. Oh, Lord, may the words from my mouth and the, the meditations of all of our hearts together, may it not only be acceptable, but may it be pleasing to you. You who are our rock and our redeemer. Today's sermon title is 2022. In Cana, there was a wedding feast, and, and it seems Mary had something to do with the arrangements because she was worried when the wine ran out. And she had authority enough to ask the servants to do whatever Jesus told them to do. Some think that the groom was none other than John himself and, and that his mother was Salome, the sister of Mary. It's interesting to note that there is no mention of Jesus' father, Joseph, at this point. Most scholars think the reason is that Joseph was dead by this time and that this is one of the reasons why Jesus spent 18 long years in Nazareth. Jesus took it upon himself to support his mother and his family and until his brothers and sisters were old enough to, to look after themselves. This not only shows that Jesus was a good boy, but that he can sympathize with those who lose parents and, and have to take on big responsibilities at a young age. In any event, Jesus and his disciples are invited to this wedding feast. And at a wedding feast in Jesus' day, well, it could, it could go on for a week or, or ten days. It was a huge celebration. And wine was absolutely essential. Without wine, the rabbi said, there is no joy. So imagine the terror that would have shot through Mary's veins when, when she was told that the wine was all gone. How could she let her sister down on the biggest day of her life? So Mary went to Jesus to tell him what was wrong. Then she said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. It's been said that Mary's words to Jesus are, are, pertinent, are pertinent to us all today. Do whatever he tells you. Isn't that the key to life? If we want God to move in our lives, we must be prepared to do what he says. Now, it's not always easy. And it will probably take a lot of missteps and mistakes to get it right, if we ever do. But when and if we do, we will find ourselves living within a miracle. So the, the servants take Mary's word seriously. Do whatever he tells you. We're told that nearby six stone water jars, 
the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. And when they took some out to the master of ceremonies, he tasted the wine that had been turned, or the water that had been turned into wine. And it was the best, the absolute most choice wine he'd ever tasted. Jesus turning ordinary water into the best of wines signals to us the effect that Jesus can have and, and does have on people's lives. There can be no doubt that throughout history, the influence Jesus has had on the lives of people is, has never been surpassed. No other great leader has inspired so many positive changes in the lives of, of his or her followers. People who encounter the risen Christ are totally transformed. Their outlook on life is altered forever. Staying true to their faith, they, they dedicate their lives to serving others. I have no doubt that the decision to follow Jesus Christ, to do what he says, is the single most important thing a human being can ever do. It is the key to everything. And it's the glue keeping this world together. But there are times throughout history when that glue starts running in short supply. Oftentimes, this is the fault of the church, which is, of course, made up of, made up of, of faulty human beings. We wander off course. We might get too involved in worldly politics, thinking that salvation is found in human governments, policies, political candidates, and parties. We might have scandals and abuses that, that understandably turn people away from the church. We may become complacent, lazy, burned out, frustrated. We may forget Mary's words in today's gospel lesson. Do whatever he tells you. Do whatever he tells you. You know, this is one of the most amazing stories. Jesus goes to this wedding. He has no plans to do anything but to relax and enjoy himself and, and take part in the festivities. But then the wine runs out. What would you do? Would you try and collect money from as many guests as possible and in order to make a wine run to the nearest vineyard? Or would you just turn around and go home? Or would you make the best out of a seemingly hopeless situation? That's the difference between Jesus and so many of us, isn't it? Jesus obviously looks at the glasses half full rather than the glass half empty. He looks around and the first thing he sees are six stone jars standing there close by the kind that were used for ceremonial washing. Each jar holds from 20 to 30 gallons of water. Well, so what? What in the world does that have to do with wine? It's kind of like trying to, to make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. It just doesn't happen. These two things have nothing in common, water and wine. But this doesn't stop Jesus. Jesus takes an empty and inadequate situation and makes the best out of it. He takes the water that they have and makes the wine that they need. Have you ever looked at your life and thought, gosh, I'm kind of inadequate. After all, I'm too old to make much difference anymore. I might as well hang it up. Well, I'm just going to tell you in plain words, that's a bunch of hooey. You can visit the homebound. You can pray. You can write notes to those who need to be lifted up. You can share your resources. You can come on over to the church and get involved in, in whatever is going on, making a true and real difference. And it's the same for those who feel too young or, or too uneducated or, or just not spiritual enough. Listen, I've got news for you. None of us are spiritual enough. And in this day and age, I realize that there's a lot of uh, extenuating circumstances that may, may limit us making home visits and things like that. But that doesn't stop us from picking up a phone and making a connection or, 
or just there are ways. There are ways we can be very useful. But I'll tell you this much. God has a habit of using the ordinary and then turning it into something extraordinary. Imagine taking plain old ordinary water and transforming it into the best wine the world has ever known. That's what Jesus can do with your life, my life and any life, no matter who you are, how much money you do or don't have, whether you consider yourself multi-talented or, or deficient in, in many areas. Nothing, now hear this, nothing is impossible for God. No one is a lost cause. Everything and everyone is full of potential. All we need to do is do whatever he tells us. If you've ever visited great cathedrals with those amazing stained glass windows, you'd think the apostles were larger than life stained glass saints with shining halos. But actually, they were very, very common human beings. It's a shame that they have so often been, been put, up on pet, put up so high on these pedestals as magnificent marble figures or portrayed in paintings like some kind of Roman gods because the fact is that dehumanizes them. But here's the thing. They were just 12 completely ordinary people, human in every way, and, and we shouldn't lose touch with that. We shouldn't lose sight of that. So, what qualified those people to be apostles? The truth is, it wasn't any innate ability or outstanding talent of their own. They were Galileans. They were not elite. Galileans were considered low, low class, rural, uneducated people. They were commoners, nobodies. But those nobodies would become the very leaders of Jesus' church, its very foundation. Do you ever become discouraged or, or disheartened when your spiritual life and, and witness suffer because of a personal sin or failure? We sometimes tend to think we're worthless nobodies. But be encouraged. Worthless nobodies are just the kind of people that God uses. If you think about it, that's all he has to work with. And that's because we're all pretty much the same. We're all in the same boat. No one is really any better than anyone else. Now, 2021 was another interesting year in the life of, of the church, wasn't it? We are involved in our community in ways that that I can only dream about, really. God uses us, normal, everyday people, to do some pretty extraordinary things. Just think about that. We have many ministries that, that actually touch people where they live, affecting their daily lives. I know that the, the churches that I serve they, they've got food pantries, and they've got Bible studies, and they've got after-school programs. And, and the fact of the matter is, those two churches combined in one night, in one night, raised $1,100 for a local family that, that's in need. And that's just one example of, of how we do our very best to reach out to those in need. We're going to reach out to people who may not know Christ yet, offering them that same grace and love and, and compassion that he's shown us. We are known in the communities we serve, and, and we're going to become even more known. God is working through you. I love the part in our gospel lesson where the master of ceremonies, not knowing anything at all about what's going on, takes the bridegroom aside and says, everyone brings out the choice wine first and, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you, you have saved the best till now. 
Some naysayers may look at the decline in, in memberships in churches over the past few decades and, and say, well, the best is in the past. Or, And I've, I've heard this. I've said this. I wish we could return to the good old days of the past. But you know what? God knows what God is doing. We can trust Him. And our community is, is changing. Lots of things are changing. But one thing that does seem to remain somewhat constant, there are lots, there are lots of unchurched folks who, who live right in our neighborhoods. Many of them are lonely. Lots of people are looking for places where they can connect, where they can find other people who bring meaning and laughter and, and fun into their lives. Jesus was perfectly at home just rejoicing at a party. There is no reason why cheerfulness, openness, and overflowing love and generosity should not be one of the main attributes of His people. There is no reason why His church shouldn't be one big celebration and party for God. People need meaning. They're searching for authenticity. And they're begging the church to be authentic. My friends, that is you and that is me. We together are the church. Yeah, we're ordinary folks. But God loves and uses ordinary folks. Mary instructed the servants at the wedding, do whatever he tells you. And that's exactly what they did. And Jesus transformed regular old water into sparkling wine. 2022 is upon us now, and, and we're just getting a good start. You know what? I submit to you. I think Jesus has saved the best until now. And praise God for that. Amen. Well, that's our message for, for today. And I just do want to leave you with this. We have been going through some very difficult times for the past few years, and, and we're still going through them. Make no mistake. But we have no idea what the future holds. Now, we have the assurance that God is going to be with us and God's going to love us through whatever may be, but we really don't know. But why can't? Why, why can't 2022, maybe, just maybe, be the best year any of us has ever had? It's kind of up to us. It's how we approach it. It's what kind of attitudes we're going to adopt and, and just exercise every day. I choose to think 2022 is going to be pretty awesome, and I'm excited about the possibilities. I hope, I hope you are as well, and let's just all do our part. Let's do what he tells us, and let's make it the best. I hope you're all safe, and I hope you're all warm. Um, I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. Uh, one of these days we are in person as worship, but I know some of you can't make that yet. And uh, maybe some of you aren't comfortable yet. That's okay. Uh, we're, we're definitely living in some weird times, but we'll get there. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. And uh, make sure you stay connected with each other throughout these times. It's very, very important. But most important, make sure you stay connected with God. Bye for now, and I'll... I'll see you soon.